Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics C, uh, Unit 1 Kinematics Part 1. Uh, today we're going to be defining motion. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, uh, average versus instantaneous, all of those things in this first part of kinematics. So let's get going. Uh, here we're going to be defining motion. And uh, the first definition of motion that we want to take a look at is position. And obviously an object's position is where it is at any given point in time. And it's a vector quantity, which means it has both magnitude and direction. It comes from the origin to the object's position, and we're going to call that position vector r. And so in one-dimensional motion, the position is obviously just given the x-coordinate. But this position can then be related to its displacement. So an, as an object moves, it's obviously its position changes. And that change of position is what we call displacement. And in one dimensional displacement, we can take a look at our change in our r, our r vector, is r final minus r initial. Okay. In one dimensional motion, we'll just say the change in its position, the change in its x, which we call its displacement, is equal to x final minus x initial. And so this is what we're going to take a look at when we take a look at its displacement. But the object, uh, when its displacement changes or its position changes, it's going to be moving at a speed. That's its scalar quantity. Uh, at its vector quantity, we're going to be taking a look at its velocity. And here we're going to just be zeroing in on average velocity, and then we'll move the instantaneous. But average velocity is the rate at which the position changes. Okay, so it's a slope. It's a it's a rate. It's a what we will call a derivative in terms of calculus. And the average velocity is its displacement during a time interval divided by the time interval itself, which means the units will be in meters per second. So let's take a look at an example. Here we're just taking a look at the average velocity between one second. You can see at one second it is at this position of about 2.5 meters or so. At six seconds it's at this position, which is about six meters. And so if we want to take a look at the average uh, velocity, the average change of its position divided by its change of rate, we're going to be taking a look at the slope from this one second to its three second. Okay, uh, we can take a look at in terms of the mathematics, the average velocity is going to be equal to the change of its position over the change of its time, which means the position final, which obviously was about six meters, minus the position initial, which was about 2.5 meters, divided by its change in the time, its time final, six seconds, minus time initial, one second. And so as you go and do that mathematics, obviously the units will be in meters per second. Okay, And that will be the average velocity. But the, in the interesting thing is the average velocity doesn't tell you the whole story. Okay, It just tells you basically the change in position divided by the change in time. Now if we wanted a more uh, exact information, we want, might want to know the instantaneous velocity. Okay, which means what we're looking at is the average velocity over a very, 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 very small interval of time, which we call its instantaneous velocity, which means the limit of the change of time is approaching zero. We're taking a look at that instantaneous velocity, which means here, if we're taking a look at what's the instantaneous velocity right here at three seconds, well, we're, we're, what we're going to be looking at is what's the slope at this exact instant of time, okay? And obviously using calculus, it makes it much easier. So the instantaneous velocity is going to be the limit as the change in time approaches zero of the average velocity, okay? The average velocity, which means it's also going to be equal to the limit of the change in time as it approaches zero of the change in the position over the change in the time, which means that the velocity will equal to the slope of the tangent to the curve at this specific point in time, or the dx over dt. Okay, And that is the calculus behind it. Now, we can also take a look at what's the displacement. And I hope you've seen this graph. This graph is different from the last graph. And this, this is a velocity time graph. 
And what we're going to be looking at is, this is the velocity at one second, this is the velocity at three seconds, and if we want to know the change of its position, which is its displacement, over this time interval, we're going to be looking at the area under this curve. So the displacement is going to be equal to the integral from the initial time to the final time of this velocity time function. Okay, And so if we think about it, if we just said the velocity as a function of time equals the differential of the position with respect to time, then we can also take a look at this being the antiderivative there, okay? which means that the derivative or the slope of the position time graph is the velocity, which means the integral or the area of the velocity time graph is the displacement there. Okay? So let's move on. Uh, we also want to take a look at what happens when the velocity changes. Okay, And remember, velocity can change in one of two ways. It can change in its speed changing or its direction changing, and that will give you an acceleration. So an acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes, Okay, which means it's the differential of the velocity, which means the slope or the differential, the derivative of the velocity time graph, um, or grappa, gives you the acceleration, uh, but the area or the integral under the acceleration time graph will give you the velocity. Okay, So here let's take a look at calculating acceleration. Now what did we just say is the average acceleration, the average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in the time or the slope, which means the instantaneous acceleration is going to be the limit as the time approaches zero of the change in velocity over the change in time, or what we want to call the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Okay? Or we can say the second derivative of the position. Okay, the second derivative of the position. So if we wanted to find out what was the average or what, what was the average ex acceleration of this graph right here from two seconds to let's say seven seconds, we'll just take a look at the slope. Okay, but if we want to know what was the instantaneous, instantaneous acceleration at eight seconds, we would take the slope of the tangent line or the derivative of this curve right here. Okay? Which means if we said that the acceleration, okay, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time or the second derivative of the position, then what can we say is that if I do my kind of algebra here, and move dt over to the other side, and I have dv here, and then I take integrals of both sides, okay, which means the initial velocity to the final velocity, the initial time to the final time, then what do I know is that the velocity as a function of time, that's the integral, is equal to the sorry, the velocity as a function of time is equal to the integral of the acceleration function with respect to time. Uh, to put it in kind of a summary form, if we want to go from a position time graph to a velocity time graph, we're going to take the slope or the dx over dt. If we want to go from the velocity time graph to the acceleration time graph, I'm going to do the dv over dt, the derivative of the velocity. But if I want to go the other way, if I want to take the go from acceleration and find the velocity, I'm going to do the integral of the acceleration function with respect to time. If I want to go from velocity and find the, the displacement, I'm going to take the integral of velocity with respect to time. And last but not least, let me just give you a quick uh, quick example problem of we're given here this position time function and it is not a linear function at all okay it is definitely a polynomial and so to find the velocity I'm gonna take the derivative of the position with respect to time and that's gonna give me my 
velocity function, which means I'm going to use the power rule. 3 times 3 is 9, and that will be t squared. 2 times 2 is 4, and that becomes t to the first power. Minus 4, and that is my velocity time function. Now, when I want to go to the second derivative of the position, or the first derivative of the velocity, I'm going to take the dv over dt which means that will give me my acceleration as a function of time. Again, I'm going to use the power rule. 9 times 2 is 18. That becomes t to the first power plus 4, and that would be my acceleration. I can continue going on and on and on to the third and the fourth derivative and so on and so forth, and that will end up giving me my functions as we go along. I uh, hope this helped. Uh, this is part one of kinematics for AP Physics C. We're, I'm signing off. This is Mr. Aiden. Have a great day.